This is Clyde with the Brace Blogger, OMP Podcast, number 61. It is October 9th, 2018, and this is from the OMP Edge, September 2018 magazine, page 16, Industry Review, Research. Heading. Lower leg orthoses can replace foot abduction orthoses when treating club foot. Subtitle, researchers assess the compliance. And efficacy of an alternative treatment for children with idiopathic club foot who experienced irresolvable problems that led to therapeutic non-compliance with the standard foot abduction orthosis of the Ponsetti method. The study published recently in BMC Musculoskeletal Disorders indicated that changing from a foot abduction orthosis to a lower leg orthosis at any point during treatment did not lead to an increased rate of surgery and caused few problems. The minimum follow-up was five years. The research team equipped 45 patients with unilateral lower leg orthoses developed at a facility in Germany. The orthoses were custom made with resin and carbon and were built in three parts following Bies and Fahlig's design with a circular foot unit, a lower leg unit, and an inner liner made of tepaphone. The foot unit followed the principles of the calcaneus rotation ring type orthosis described by Bayesi and Foling for the treatment of spastic club feet. It fixed the subtalar joint in a valgus position. The 45 patients, 75 feet, how does that work out? 45 patients, only 75 feet, I suppose, were retrospectively registered and included in the study. Compliance with the bracing protocol was 91% with the lower leg orthosis and 46% with the foot abduction orthosis. The most common problems with the foot abduction orthosis were sleep disturbance, 50%, and cutaneous problems, 45%. With the lower leg orthosis, 9% of patients experienced sleep disturbance and no cutaneous problems occurred. 13% of the patients being treated with a foot abduction orthosis until the age of 4 23 patients, 4 feet, 40 feet, underwent surgery because of relapse, defined by rigid recurrence of any of the components of a club foot. 14% of patients being treated with a lower leg orthosis, 22 patients, 35 feet, mostly following initial treatment with a foot abduction orthosis, experienced recurrence. End of that article. Next article, page 16. Human-inspired reflex improves mild electric cans grip. That's the headline. Preventing grasped objects from slipping out of a prosthetic can would be useful for the prosthesis user who cannot directly feel the grip force applied to grasped objects and necessary grip force may change when the object is rotated or transported. In an open access study published in the Journal of Healthcare Engineering, Researchers explored a human-inspired grasp reflex controller for prosthetic hands to prevent grasped objects from slipping when they are rotated. They found that the controller improved a powered prosthetic hand's ability to maintain a precision grip on objects that were subjected to wrist pronation and supination. The slip prevention controller was evaluated with six, six objects in benchtop tests and by 12 individuals, 4 women and 8 men, without amputations during experiments that replicated realistic tasks of daily life. An analysis of variants showed highly significant improvement in the number of successfully completed cycles for both the benchtop and human tests when the slip prevention reflex was active. An object sorting task which was designed to serve as a cognitive distraction for the human subjects while controlling the prosthetic hand had a significant impact on many of the performance metrics. Benchtop testing used six different objects with a range of mechanical characteristics. 
Human tests showed far fewer drop and break failures for each object and person with hand orientation feedback, HOF, the study found. In a sorting task, the object was broken and dropped much less frequently with the use of HOF, while still sorting at about the same speed. Each person was allowed roughly 15 minutes to become familiar with EMG control while the EMG hardware was calibrated for each individual. Each subject sat in a chair facing the prosthetic hand with the EMG preamplifiers strapped to the forearm on his or her non-dominant hand. Dominant hands were kept free for the sorting task that consisted of separating a mix of four types of nuts and bolts, 50 pieces total, into unique containers. All subjects were timed as they completed the sorting task three times prior to EMG experimentation. The subjects participated in four sets of experiments using a motion control hand. Each test was repeated for three trials, and each trial consisted of ten possible pronation supination cycles. The total number of completed cycles depended on the subject's success rate. The first two tests performed by all subjects were either EMG controlled without HOF or EMG control with HOF. The third and fourth tests repeated the first two. However, the subjects simultaneously performed the nuts and bolts sorting task. End of article. And that is the end of podcast number 61. This is Clyde, braceblogger.com. It is October 9th, 2018. Thanks for listening.